Hello and uh, welcome again to this uh, part in which uh, we'll learn about more operators. You might have seen my previous video in which we talked about operators and we covered almost all of them. So this is part two of operators. So we we'll proceed with that. Now I have said this many times in my previous videos that characters are integral types. So <clears throat> you can say that uh, uh, I can add 1 to C. So C was initially A, so it will become B. Now one more thing before we proceed further. You need to know about ASCII table, okay, because uh, C works on the basis of ASCII. So what gets rendered because of what you need to uh, see in ASCII table. So here we go. Okay. So it will become B and then if you add plus 5 it will become G and then you increment this plus plus operator then you have got H. Now this I have already covered the enum part in one of the videos. Now you can apply equality operator also to this so it will give you the boolean value out there. Okay we have the ASCII table loaded. So you see uh, how these are stored so small a in decimal is like 97 and if you add one to that it becomes 98 which effectively gets rendered as b when you do put care or you use in printf and so on so you see the values associated with these uh, now one of the very important things for us is null and then we have got bell and backspace horizontal tab new line and vertical tab and form feed and carriage return these are important ones for us because we will see that uh, these are being used and then the important ones are our uh, symbols which are available on uh, our US PC 104 keyboard now clearly it covers uh, US keyboard because computer science majorly started in US not in Spain or uh, Russia so ASCII table has that uh, it does not have Russian or Spanish uh, symbols okay so uh, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll just enable try make mode okay. cost compilation error mode okay so <clears throat> now we see we can do this you can even do multiplication on uh, character but uh, most of the time that will be not useful because you it will not achieve the desired value for example if you multiply a value to say h what do you want to achieve it won't be that h will be repeated five times so multiplication typically does not yield a proper value we do that mostly to get to next uh, uh, symbol of ascii table now there is one more operator which is called uh, conditional operator which has got this form e1 question mark e2 colon e3 now this is uh, somewhat difficult to start in the beginning but the result is like this if e1 expression 1 is true then the result will be e2 or e3 so suppose i say i is equal to 2 question mark 3 colon 5 so to being true, I'll get a value of 3. And since in, for j, this is 0, which is false, I j will get a value of 5. Okay. That was simple, right? It turned out to be simple. Now we see comma operator. So I don't need to explain this. I have assigned several values to this. And if you run this uh, program, you'll see it gets 1 okay i missed one operator that is called tilde and size of we have already discussed so what it does is it will flip your bits in a bitwise fashion so if i say i is equal to 4 this integer i is equal to 4 and then i say tilde i then you get minus 5 and now i let you think why this is minus 5 and the hint is you need to understand 2's complement. So what happens is you have got 32 bits for i. So from the right side, the third bit is 1. 
So when you apply tilde, what happens is that bit becomes zero and all other bits become one. Okay. And now if you store that value in two's complement, that's a negative value. Okay. And then what happens is since we are storing it in signed integer, that has to be rounded and then that becomes five. And to learn about associativity and uh, 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 order of evolution, you need to look uh, at its table. And that table is available in my book uh, as good as uh, any other book. So at many places you can refer to this table. Uh, okay, But uh, it really does not matter. I'll tell you why. We'll see why. There is something called operator precedence. Now you know that when we multiply, uh, multiplication has higher precedence than addition or subtraction. That is the very natural behavior of uh, operators, right? But what if, if you want uh, addition to happen before uh, multiplication? So what uh, happens in this case, for example, is I am adding 2 plus 3 before this multiplication can occur. So the output would be 20 rather than 4 multiplied by 3 plus 2 that is 14. Now to override this uh, you use parenthesis. Parenthesis override any operator precedence. Now I have written something here in all capital and uh, uh, this is red also you see. <laughs> so that's our luck that it is red. Never try to memorize precedence as it will lead to error eventually. Even if someone programs uh, whole day in and out in C and he remembers all precedence, if you do not use parenthesis, it will lead to error. And remember also that you are not writing code only for yourself. So you may be a master programmer and you know op all operator precedence, but the next person who will come when you leave your company and or when you will leave your code base and somebody else will come and try to maintain your code then he has got to read that code and at certain times you have to use parenthesis like in this case if you don't use parenthesis no way multiplication is not going to happen after addition so you're bound parenthesis also do one thing that is they make uh, the order of evolution look cleaner they it's like you explicitly saying that okay i want to this to happen first and then that to happen later but if you don't use parenthesis it's like you rely on precedence not good think about other programmers who will come and maintain your code even if you are a master programmer so we are almost done with operators now we'll proceed with the control flow statements in coming tutorials that is if else i'll deal with if else not with switches in the beginning later we'll see switches and then I'll deal with for, while and do while. And then we will start looking at some difficult problems. I mean for beginners, although they are very simple. We'll start looking at some problems and we'll see how to solve those problems. All right. So see you in uh, next part. Till then, enjoy.